In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I don't know if I should be alarmed at the fact that I just kind of rolled my eyes when I realized that there is allegedly an alien mothership lurking in our solar system that could potentially be watching us with tiny probes. But I really think it's a reflection of the fact that we have different priorities. First of all, please come. We need help. We're not doing too good down here. And if you want to slip into my DMs with the confidence of a single man in his 60s and watch all of us from a distance, be my damn guest. Because at least someone cares. And to the people who think it's creepy that there's a chance we might be watched, do not act like you aren't singing. You better not shout. You better not cry. You better not shout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. If you're singing about him seeing you while you're sleeping and knows when you're awake, then I don't want to hear it when it comes to this. I just want to know, are you attractive? And what are you going to do to help this economy? Can you just, I don't know, knock some sense into the billionaires who keep raising our prices for groceries, making it hard for us to survive? Maybe lower the inflation rates. And I love the fact that you chose a cigar-shaped ride. Is that a Gorgorghini? Beautiful. A 2024? Love that. I didn't wonder if there's aliens out there that are watching us and they're kind of recording us as if we're like a sitcom or some kind of TV show and they're just getting their kicks off because they enjoy seeing the ridiculousness that happens on Earth. We now know exactly what happens when we die. I literally can't believe I'm actually saying this. So of course, one of the biggest questions in existence is what happens when we die? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Do we just become a ghost or is there just... Nothing. Well, now we may actually know. Make sure you share this video with someone because, you know, they might want to know what happens when they die. So, scientists have been monitoring brain activity after death. In the minutes leading up to death, death, and the minutes after death. So, the scientists measured the brain waves of this 87-year-old man who passed away. Now, the team noticed after passing away the difference in gamma oscillations, which connect different brain regions for functions like perception, movement, memory, and emotion. Dr. Zemmer, the neurosurgeon who was running these tests, said, through generating oscillations involved in memory retrieval, the brain may be playing a last recall of important life events just before we die, similar to the ones reported in near-death experiences. Also saying that the way the brain was working, the oscillations and the movement in it, was like that of someone that was dreaming. So we know for certain that the brain was still active shortly after death. But this is where it gets interesting. This happened for about eight minutes after the man passed away. They compared it to someone who was wired up while they were just asleep and dreaming, and the brain activity was basically identical. And it was after about eight to 12 minutes from when this man passed away that then the brain activity stopped. Which means we do get about eight to 12 minutes of brain activity after we pass away. And as the scientist said, it was connecting to all these different emotions, possibly playing out past events, i.e your life flashing before your eyes. But now, this is where we get a bit crazier. So think about this for a second. When you're dreaming, time doesn't really exist, right? You could actually be in a dream for five minutes and it feels like an hour or two hours, or sometimes you'll go back to sleep when you wake up. It feels like you've been to school for the whole day and then you wake up and go to school. I bet some of you had that dream. So we know you get seven or eight minutes when you pass away. So maybe it literally does feel like you're playing your whole life again. One of those vivid dreams, a lucid dream where it feels so real like you're actually there. Or maybe you just have a random dream. But I wonder what that man and others were thinking about in that seven or eight minutes of brain activity after death. I don't know, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, they're still looking into this and running more tests. So make sure you hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. Wow, I found that extremely fascinating. I often theorize myself about when one passes and it doesn't inflict trauma to the head necessarily like if your brain was to explode it might not work that way but for this example this individual was an elderly man passed away they did the brain analysis and they found that he was still basically imagining after death for eight minutes and that's pretty that's a pretty long time it always leads me back to believing the theory that the DMT that is within our brain releases after death and it allows us to experience either heaven or hell. And we experience heaven or hell depending on how guilty or pure our conscience is. And with this, eight minutes for this individual could have felt like an eternity. And then when it finally did shut off, after the eight minutes of brain activity finally did shut off, all of his energy could have potentially been released to the world, and he's still living that DMT trip. Very fascinating. I 
cannot wait for one day when machines can actually visualize and see what we are thinking and dreaming. I know that sounds a little sketchy because that could happen to us in our homes and government agents and stuff could see what our thoughts are. But in the manner of like this, this would be a perfect time to have a machine strapped up to someone's head so that the machine can provide video image of what this person is seeing in their imagination. And that would be pretty awesome. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that maybe we're trying to study things a little too hard or do you find this fascinating such as myself? Because I actually found this quite fascinating. I want to take y'all down a deep, dark rabbit hole. This is about CERN. Whether you know what CERN is or not, this is going to shake you to your core because it's written in Bible prophecy exactly what's happening over there at CERN. So CERN is a hydron collider. It is the largest in the world. It cost billions of dollars and many nations around the world funded it. It's in Geneva, Switzerland. It's under the ground. Many of the scientists there have claimed that they're opening portals to other dimensions. They're likening it to a Stargate where entities are coming through, coming in and going out when this thing is turned on. Well, during the eclipse, it's going to be at full power. Not only that, the logo for CERN, where these scientists work underground, is three sixes wrapped together to make 666. Not only that, out front there's a giant statue of Shiva, the goddess of death and destruction, which is going to come into play with what I'm about to show you. Now understand that during the eclipse, this thing is going to reach full power. Now, they claim that they are trying to open portals and bring entities out. But here's what's crazier about CERN. CERN is located in Geneva, Switzerland, over the temple of Apollo, or in the Bible, Apollyon. Okay, now the Bible specifically references Apollyon in the book of Revelation. Now they claim to be opening portals for entities to come through. It says this in Revelation chapter 9, it says, The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. He opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. But just wait. It says that entities are coming forth from this pit. It says they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was like the sound of chari chariots and horses running to battle. They had tails like scorpions. They were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon. One woe is past, and woe, two more has come hereafter. So the Bible literally says that the key to the bottomless pit will open in the place of Apollyon, which is where CERN is built, where they claim to be opening portals. And the Bible says that out of this pit will come these beasts and creatures that don't exist. <laughs> this is not the craziest thing you've ever heard in your entire life, that this stuff is literally happening. There are the top scientists in the world working secretly underground in this place that the kings of the world put right over the, the tomb of Apollo or Apollyon or the place of the bottomless pit that the Bible calls it. And they are claiming that entities are coming through when the Bible says that out of this place, entities will come through. You guys, what is going This is it. The Lord is about to return. This is the book of Revelation is literally unfolding before our very eyes and it will hit peak power. You guessed it. April the 8th. I have my doubts that anything bad will happen around the eclipse or during CERN's power up. I really do not think that anything bad will happen. We will see. It's coming up three more days. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And for the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed. And for the people that are just watching, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And just a reminder, I'm still gaining more questions for DK, so if you want to be a part of that when that happens, make sure you leave a comment that says question for DK, and eventually I'm going to make a video where I answer those questions, probably at the end of these types of videos, but I am going to start doing that. So make sure if you have any specific questions you want to ask me, whether it's conspiracy theories, theories in general, or just personal information that's not too personal, I won't answer those. Leave me a comment starting with question for DK. I'm sorry, what?
What? The UK is about to be submerged underwater. So, as I'm sure you're all aware of global warming and sea levels rising constantly, right? You see it in places like Venice and the Maldives, which are literally probably going to be submerged in not that long at all. But over here in the UK, or you guys in the US, you probably don't really think about it that much because, well, it's not affecting you. Well, it could be very, very soon. So scientists have estimated that sea levels are rising by around 4 millimetres every single year, which doesn't seem a lot at first, but it is quite a considerable amount. So they have estimated in the UK that by 2050, these places could be fully submerged. Places including Brighton, Liverpool, Newcastle, completely under the water, literally becoming Atlantis. So yeah, if you live near the coast, move. By 2050, they've estimated that New York could begin to flood, and by the end of the century could be fully submerged into Atlantis as well. But yeah, make sure you hit that follow button, and I will keep you updated. Man, that's pretty crazy. I hope that's not the outcome for the UK because that would just be horrible. You know, you're losing your home, your family heritage, everything could just be lost because of water. In the country I live, I heard that Florida is going to be doing the same thing. It'll be completely submerged underwater after X amount of years. I'm not 100% sure when, but it is kind of scary to think about because that's, you, you can't really come back from that. You know, if your land is taken over by water, you just either have to live on the water or you have to move inland. And that's just not as easy as one would think. And especially if you're drowning in water. Aliens, UFOs, real or not? The head of Aero, which is the DOD's UFO research wing, was a, a true scientist and engineer, just came out to basically say there is no truth, no, proof, yeah. no grounds, huh. no nothing that UFOs are real. My stance on this, UFOs are real, but they're not aliens. 98% hmm. of what happens in the sky, we'll be able to rationalize and describe without a problem. The 2% of what happens in the sky that we don't know should scare us a whole hell of a lot more than it does because if it's not aliens it's us and it's some shit about us that we don't even know and that's scary and why is that scary because that could be next fleet of drones developed by the russians that could be a hypersonic china. cruise missile by china so, yeah that could be some weird sort of joint new thing that's being developed by syria and iran and north korea and like it's being tested over montana mm -hmm. like that is some scary shit we want to find comfort in aliens because maybe they're here for good reasons once you say it's a fucking bad guy there's no good reasons for it to be there yeah, I agree. I I'm starting to get to that point where I'm not necessarily believing in aliens as much because one, they haven't really shown themselves. If they really are out there, they could be more present into everybody's lives a lot more than just saying, hey, I think I see a UFO up there. It does make me wonder if it is our military or other countries' militaries doing these test experiments and we're just able to witness it from time to time and we cop it up as UFOs, UAPs, because that's definitely what it is. It's an unidentified flying object or unidentified aerial phenomenon. I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but the more and more I think about it and see things, the more I'm starting to think that's also, and that's also why they do space force and everything like that's because our governments are aware that other countries are working on this secret or hidden technology and they're trying to prepare for intergalactic domination because they're eventually going to want to own the galaxy someone's going to want to own the galaxy or certain parts of it just like how they do here on earth they want to have certain parts of it for themselves they're going to want the same thing in space and what better way to do it than set up military so we can fight for it ufos uaps might not necessarily be extraterrestrial aliens or interdimensional beings but they're our people with advanced technology i just realized something y'all that's why the water's so clear. They make it. Look, they making the water, y'all. Look. That's why you can see through it. They making it. We can't trust shit no more. You feel me? Look, I'm way in Turk and Keiko in a clear, pretty ass water. <laughs> and I just had to find out the hard way that it wasn't real. Look at it. Is you in Cancun? <laughs> Uh, they make the water. It's out there. <laughs> I have a feeling that that's like fiber optic cable for internet or something like that. I don't think that that's pipeline to make the ocean, but I could be wrong. This guy might actually know the secrets. Why do you think Admiral Byrd and the Rockefellers were so mm -hmm. much more interested in yeah. 
Antarctica, the South Pole, rather than the North Pole. There is an incredible story that was in Admiral Byrd's diary that was found by his kids, where he said he flew into an area that opened up at Antarctica, and he went into an area where it was lush and tropical almost. And as he got into this area, this is according to his own diary, people can look this up, something took over his plane, and these two UFO-type craft, circular craft, flying saucers, came and it took over his crap and it guided him in to this area where they landed. And then they took him to meet somebody that he calls in his diary, the master. Pretty interesting story. This master told him that they were wary of the nuclear bombs that had just, you know, been utilized, uh, dropped the nuclear on Japan and so forth. And they were wary of our experimentation with nuclear devices and wars because they're sharing this planet as well. There's a lot more to the story as far as I've heard. And wherever Admiral Byrd was taken, he said that they were extremely advanced. So I guess like yesterday's video when I was talking about this, why would they send a normal person back with this type of information if they're super intelligent, super advanced? They have to know that the people that are trying to create nuclear weapons and things are kind of crazy. And they're not going to necessarily either one, believe this individual or two, they're going to try to silence him because they're kind of crazy. They're power hungry. Why would they not come out and say something? Are they afraid of being eliminated? Are they not as advanced as some people say, and they can't handle the war? I, I would really like to know. That's the reason why I do not necessarily believe this story, because I feel like an advanced civilization would have better ways of conveying a message to the people. Let me know what you guys think about this. I still find the story extremely fascinating. Did you know that scientists just now found out what causes chronically itchy skin? Conventional medical wisdom believed that it was because you had skin conditions like psoriasis and eczema that your skin itched. But it's really a separate mechanism. Just very recently, researchers at Harvard Medical School found out that there's a bacteria that's very common on the skin. The bacteria cause a molecular signal that your nerve endings pick up, and that's what leads to the itching sensation. So the researchers had animals that had really itchy skin and were just constantly scratching at themselves and they applied a medicine that's already available from the FDA for blood clotting on their skin and that stopped the itch. They disrupted that molecular pathway. If you can get rid of the bacteria, you can get rid of the itch even before you get rid of the psoriasis. This is actually pretty interesting. I'm gonna have to do some extra research on this. I don't necessarily have itchy, itchy skin or anything like that, but I do go through these moments of time where I get itchy patches of skin. For example, on my face right here, you can see there is a little bit of discoloration. That's a dry patch of skin that always just comes up out of nowhere for some reason every once in a while. It'll go away after a while, but it always comes back. And it does irritate me a lot because it does kind of itch. And if you scratch it, it gets red and things like that. And it's just not pleasant. So I'm going to look into this and see what all there is about this to see if it actually works because this wouldn't be too bad. The guy who created an actual time machine, he was asked, what was your intentions with all that? He said, I want to make time travel machine that I can walk through, a human can walk through. And then he was asked, what would you bring with you? He's like, just the cell phone. Okay. So right after that interview, him and his machine, two years after, disappeared, right? Oh, Could shit. not be found. It's still a cold case. Right after, I think it's like a month after his disappearance, a cold case in 1930 opened up again. And this is crazy. So that cold case, there was a tube, a metal tube yeah. that washed up the beach in LA, right? Inside was a guy, a uh, human remains. He was unidentifiable, but the only thing he had was a was cell, cell phone. phone. Oh, the only shit. thing that guy said that he would bring with him if he time traveled yeah, was, was a cell, a cell phone. phone. I do not know if this is a real story or not. I really never looked into it to see if it was real, but I have definitely heard this before. And it's a pretty fascinating story. If you guys have more information on it, or if you know the facts of the story, please leave a comment down below letting me know, because I am curious to get a little bit deeper into this theory. Can somebody explain to me in crayon eating terms why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live? And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, work 90 hours a week. That's not the goal, guys. That's not. That should not be our standard. I'm so... I am so fucking tired of people being complacent with this uniparty, both of them fucking us over. I, 
when my parents were my age, they both made less than half of what I make and they lived alone. I cannot afford to live anywhere alone. A one bedroom apartment, $1,800. Two bedroom apartment, $2,200. Who the fuck can afford that? It is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now. But I know so many people are struggling. And do not get me started on what my grandparents were doing. They, $3,000 house. And yes, I understand inflation and all of the bullshit that they have been pulling with the Fed. Why are we allowing it? Why? And then I clock out of my shift. I am tired. I have to go home. And I check the news. Another 60 fucking billion to a country nobody can point out on a map. What are we doing? Why? Where has the plot gone? We have lost it, folks. We have fucking lost it. The American dream is dead. It is over. Gone and forgotten. That's pretty ridiculous on rent for where he is and for what you get. That's that's crazy. And I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the American dream is dead remark because I don't necessarily think it's dead. I do think it needs to be changed. Our financials aren't quite where they need to be for a comfortable form of living. But I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that the American dream is dead or do you think that it's still here? I think that we should expect more out of it because we are providing so much for this country. No one can explain why people are seeing faces in the sky at night. Take a look at this, you guys. This is in Mexico. This guy was walking home last night and he caught what appears to be a face in the sky, y'all. Look at that, y'all. It looks like a female's face. Look at this. Did that did that just, just blink? Look, it just blinked. Project Blue Beam. Hold on, y'all. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit for y'all. Just a little bit. But yeah, yep. Yeah. That's blinking. her blinking. Yeah, man. What do y'all think? That's crazy, man. But this is in Mexico, y'all. Oh, wow. Even clearer. What is going on? Now, again, this might be Project Blue Beam. We have no idea, but you can't be dismissing things, y'all, because you see a whole bunch of things taking place on the earth right now that has never taken place before. Yeah, so you got to be very open-minded. But this is crazy, y'all. It's like a huge superhero looking out. Stay weird. Definitely see a face. It's extremely blurry. I don't know where the original clip is for this video, not one that's been stitched together with someone in front of it. But there's definitely a face in the sky, and it does not look CGI. Now, I have seen the other videos of the, the face beside the moon, and that looks way more fake than this. This looks real, and then maybe we're going to start seeing more faces in the sky. That would be a very interesting thing. That would be a big one for 2024. We just start seeing faces in the sky. I don't know, though. Could it be a Project Blue Beam? Could it just be drones? Could it just be a hologram that someone's just playing around with in their backyard? I'm curious to see where we go with this. Check this out, you guys. Have you guys ever seen this? This lady says it happened to her car after it started raining. Now you can clearly see what appears to be patches of tar, but upon further examination, they smelled it and it smells like rubber. But when you look closer, you guys, they are bugs. Have you guys ever seen this? Check it out. So Jeff comes in and gets me and he's like, Jamie, come look at this black stuff in the driveway beside your tire. And I was like, is something leaking? Is it asphalt? And he sticks his hand down, and it smells like rubber, and he sticks his hand down, and it's bugs. That is all tiny little bugs, and they're moving. I'm sorry. Look at that, y'all. All of that is like millions and millions, and it's just on these two tires and different specks in the driveway. What are those little bugs, y'all? Have you guys ever seen that? I've never seen anything like this before. Me neither. And why are they on the tires? Why are they on the tires? And why so many of them? They're like millions and millions, y'all. And they're on the tires?
Does anybody know what those are and what do they do? What are their special abilities? Because I've never heard of those things before. Now, again, we are entering a new age where we're seeing new animals and new creatures coming into being. Could this be one of those as well? But it's interesting. They came after the rain and they are dark like the tires. Like you can't even tell. Can those be special nanotechnology? Y'all, what do y'all think? But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting times. With everything that's going on in the sky right now, y'all, you never know or can trust what's coming out there. So let us know what you guys think about this video. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace in. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what those are, but I have a guess. And if you really go back and you look at that clip, you'll notice that there's wet spots on the tires. Like it looks like water drops came down from the tires from the rim. It makes me wonder if those were not just a big pool of mosquito larvae and that's what we were seeing. Maybe they drove in through a puddle or something that had a whole bunch of mosquitoes in it. Or maybe the mosquitoes settled into their tires and when they started moving, they, they fell out of the tires. But that looked like mosquitoes to me. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that that was something or do, <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you guys think that was nanotechnology or do you think that maybe it was mosquito larvae or what? Because it definitely didn't look like ants. Not when they had them close. You could definitely see they were moving, but they weren't ants. Let's do the math. 10K a day. What is that? 300K a month. Mm -hmm. What is that? 3 million a year. 10 years, that's 30 million. 40%. Taxes. What are you left with? It's not enough. What are you left with? Okay, let's say you're left with 20. Living expenses, you're left with 15. You just worked 10 years and you have 15 million in the bank. This guy is a total moron. The idea that making 10,000 pounds a day as a, as a young person or as anyone is not an impressive thing is completely mind blowing. Like, this guy only exists here. He only exists in TikTok. Like, this is not a real person. Like, I would implore all of you to look at Company's House. I would implore all of you to look at any other company fact checker and see if this guy genuinely, genuinely has a business that does anything. One of the important things is the average salary in the UK is about £45,000. The average salary in the US is about £55,000. This guy is talking as if he is some sort of industry-leading, rich list type individual. Funnily enough, no one's ever heard of this guy. The one thing I do guarantee you is that this guy sells some form of course and it's probably drop shipping or it's probably copywriting so to say that you're possibly well i mean he never really did say he was making ten thousand a day he was just laying out an example i guess but to say making ten thousand a day and all that that's pretty extreme and not just everybody can do that what do you guys think do you think that that's pretty impossible or do you think that it's possible but just for a select few people not everyone can do that all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you are interested in any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.